Salon Pass, Total Football. Hey guys, welcome back to Salon Pass. On this week's episode, to mark the return of La Liga to our screens, we head to the Spanish capital to talk about Los Blancos wonder kids. What new heights can these Real Madrid youngsters reach? How have they fared so far? And with Cristiano Ronaldo no longer with the club, which one of them can hold a torch to the great one? Stay tuned to find out. So Muro is going to give a bit of a backstory of the Real Madrid wonder kids. So, okay, so when it comes to Madrid, I think we have so many wonder kids in our position at the moment, right? Uh, and I think that's down to Florentino's new policy. That um, at first, you know, we were all about buying Galacticos, but then since the market sort of got like completely ruined, and with all the whole inflation happening in the market right now, our new policy is that we are we are always investing in young talents. So I think it first started with uh, Odegaard. Um, we got him from a Norwegian club, and he was just 16 at that point, right? Um, and then you know, people instantly thought that he was a disaster after his first two seasons in Real Madrid, Castilla. And then let's get back to you know what he's doing right now. Uh, later, uh, apart from him, we have uh, Vinicius and Rodrigo who came from Brazil, Flamengo and Santos. Uh, we have Reni Jesus who we won't talk about much. Uh, we have Raheem Diaz who came from Man City. We won't talk about much. And we have Hakimi who's right now at Dortmund. So guys, what do you guys think about uh, these the main five players that I mentioned? Uh, James, I- do you want to start? Shaman had something he wanted to say. Uh, Shaman, man. Yeah, so I, I want yes. to ask you the, that that chain policy, right? So, mm. like, Fernando Perez going towards the more the youth. Is it only yeah. because of the um, inflation? Is it like, is it him wanting to change the way people look at Real Madrid? Or is it, is it just that point where he's like, okay, enough is enough. Martin can't spend too much money. Just yeah. gonna, gonna no, see, I, I think that we have been able to um, afford doing that. As in, okay, the last big transfer that Madrid did was Bale, you know, and then after that, yeah. we, maybe you can make a argument saying that we got Hamas after that, after the World Cup. Yeah. But uh, since Bale, we haven't really gone for like, you know, big signings, still Hazard, right? So I think during that time, the team was winning a lot and there was no need to make any changes. So now it yeah. was about looking for the future, right? Yeah. So, and we had a time period where from, let's say, from 20, around 2014 to 2019 we had a time period where we could actually afford like to get youngsters and let them like you know develop no, and no. i think um, uh, i feel like and i think the... that's what's happening at the at the moment you know you, you got we got uh, rodrigo vinicius during 2017 uh, odegaard during 2014 so i think we got like a number of these young players we uh, invested in a number of young players and I think right now it's come to, come into fruition, you know. So, I feel like in another two, three years, I think these players are going to be like really good. For example, if you get Odegaard. Odegaard was, when when we first bought him, I think the whole Spanish media got behind him like um, saying this guy is going to be the next big thing, he's going to be the next Messi and all that, but that didn't really turn out, you know, that great. Um, he played like one game for the first team and then he was at Castilla under Sidan and he was pretty you know he was pretty mediocre and then the Spanish media was getting you know like this guy is not going to be big you know he, he's a flop and all that and then he was shipped off to uh, Dutch league he spent time in Herenwin for one year where he, he was slowly becoming a bit better and second season he spent at Vitesse and where he was definitely the best player and then finally now he's back at Real Sociedad in the in, the, in La Liga in Real Sociedad and he's definitely the best player in Real Sociedad so you can see that you know this guy has you know come a long way from 2016 2014 and i feel like you know he's going to be the next big thing for Real Madrid in the midfield and even if you look at the stats and everything in this season's La Liga he has been the best midfielder and i'm not i'm not talking about in Real Sociedad i'm not i'm talking about like the whole league he has been the best yeah. midfielder so I feel like after Modric leaves, Odegaard is going to come into the team, definitely. And it could be yeah. next season, it could be the season after that. So, Odegaard has like a thick starting position in our team, like for sure. I think and, with um, Odegaard, he's a really technical player. So, when he was young yeah. and coming, like 
he just got bullied a lot he got bullied off the ball he couldn't do what he yeah. wanted to yeah. do because he's not about speed because if if any kid is about speed you can make an instant impact and like show you're fast you can latch on to true ball you can, yeah. outpace, you can burn some more defender but with Odegaard he's uh, more of like an agile sort of player he's very very technical and uh, he's creative so when you're young and you move into a team like Real Madrid, you are not going to be able to be the creative player that Odegaard needed to be to develop. So you talk about Hakimi? Yeah, I think I yeah. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, Shaman, did you want to say anything? No. Right, Shaman is happy. <laughs> okay, so we yeah. uh, happy. Take the stage, I. Shall we move to the, the same. Uh, Yeah. I can about, say uh, one thing about... And Rodrigo together. I say one thing? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before we move on to Hakimi, about the whole uh, the Galacticos thing, um, and, you know, a while ago we were discussing about how Real Madrid might be moving away from uh, that sort of transfer market strategy that they had. Uh, and, well... I don't think that's that surprising if you look at their history as a whole. Because what, like we, I don't think any of us are that old, but the whole Galacticos thing has only really been a thing since like the 90s. Yeah. That was when the Galacticos era began. They started making those big buys. Um, So, like, it's not really surprising that they would change their strategy to, to, uh, adapt to you know a changing market. Uh, okay, so moving on to Hakimi, it's become you know it's not really a whole lot we can say about him. He's you know he's become a key player at Dortmund. Um, he's become a little bit in the past matches. He's been a little um, like uh, aggressive, maybe like cocky, but and and that's. Um, negatively impacted his playing style when something gets to his head he gets uh, aggressive he gives away fouls uh, and his playing style gets a little um, degraded when he gets angry Maybe but when he's able to yeah but he's again he's young he's like 21 yeah so um, he has plenty of time to get that under control. Right now, though, when he's calm, he's an incredibly versatile player. He can play basically anywhere on uh, on the wing. He can play as a defender. He can play even sometimes, I guess, as a mid. But he's so basically could, super effective anywhere on that on that wing. Um, but you could say that he's a bit like Alaba, right? Like the versatility where you know, he could play right midfield. Uh, a, I say a bit, mm-hmm. but then at the same time, uh, but, Hakimi, yeah, it's not exactly the same. At left back, more like Guerrero, and uh, sorry, who? Guerrero, Rafael Guerrero. Guerrero. Rafa Guerrero. Yeah, well, Rafa Guerrero is playing as a CDM now, right? Uh, yeah, he's, like he's, a, he's a yeah. mid. He's not. Yeah, like, I think he was. Uh, like with any CDM, you have that like kind of versatility where they can kind of play as a defender, like a full defender, but not yeah. really, you know. You can but, see that with Kimmich uh, and uh, Sergio yeah. Roberto. But, yeah, but players. in Hakimi's case, he, he's, he's genuinely effective in, uh, no matter where he's played on, on whether he's played as a winger uh, or as a, as a defender or as a mid, he's, he's super effective. Yeah. So, I sh- when really good talk about him playing as a winger, uh, is it more of like a right wing back, left wing back role, or is he is he played as a both wing things, wing right? Wing no, he, he so he he can play as a wing back, sure, but no, I mean like as a as a like an out and out striker, right winger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He can also play that role, is what I'm saying. Right. But he's also he's been deployed as a like a full defender, a full back. Then yeah. he's been deployed right. as a wing back. He's been deployed um, up front as a winger. Uh, and he's been pretty effective in all of those roles. And, you know, as he gets older, I think um, he'll lose a little bit of his energy and he'll have to decide one of those roles to yeah. Yeah. Um, specialize yeah. into. But um, right now, uh, he's, he's, he's really effective no matter where he's played on that week. Uh, uh, so, 25 games, he has... Sorry. 
he's got 10 assists and 3 goals in 25 games in this bundesliga season that's insane right yeah and and the game uh, against uh, psg if you remember he like scored these two quick goals off the wing just went and like yeah. hammered it was it psg mm-hmm. i can't remember with psg oh, he's uh there's mila inter mila yeah yeah uh, i think he yeah. took the lead to nil and then yeah they ended up winning that game uh, I think the best option for for Hakimi right now is probably to go to Madrid but also yeah. there's been there's he's, a he's, massive, he really fits uh, in uh, yeah, that, there, there's a massive uh, yeah. there's a massive uh, but he, for, see, for that place though, just come back to Real Madrid I think he'll have to replace Carvajal yeah, I don't think so as a on, as a on the left wing or oh, Marcelo mm. so I think he'll yeah. have to go with um, the right wing so the right back position yeah. so uh, Carvalho is actually doing a good job. I mean, he was not in that good form for like a couple of years, but now he's getting back to his rhythm. Yeah, that, that's that's right. So I, I don't think saying. that you know. I, I feel like he should be spending more time away from Real Madrid, and I, I don't think he should be coming back to Madrid like maybe yeah. next season or even one after. Because yeah. you guys got rid of Odrizola as well, right? And yeah. then yeah, so we, eventually yeah, we sent Odrizola to Bayern. Yeah. So, yeah. If I could. Um, yeah, I shall. If I could add okay, in something. Yeah. yeah if yeah. I could add in something. uh you know in terms of moving away i guess if he moves i think the only real option for him to go is is back to to madrid because he'd really fit in with their system even the way he plays you know i I've yeah. already yeah. talked about his versatility but as a as a wing back he really yeah being uh, as who yeah push yeah 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 that's true yeah push forward and like his his passing forward passing is also uh yeah, actually even man city would not be a bad team for him yeah in fairness yeah yeah, yeah cuz you can see how like they've got cancelo and like pep hasn't i don't know if pep's a big fan of cancelo or not he's just been like uh, they've been more defensively uh, vulnerable this season because fernandinho mm-hmm. has been aged out and then like rodri hasn't been the best replacement uh, defensively so you can't really say that cancelo cancelo is not a defensive good like at all he's more of a, he's a very good attacking presence Uh, so that's why he's probably gone to work a lot more. But then uh, he's got Cancelo as well at the moment. Yeah. If they do a complete one eighty, yeah. If they do a complete one eighty, I think yeah, Hakimi is a very good option. Well, so, Miro, current, yeah, yeah have... sorry, good. Yeah. yeah, his current asking price is sixty mil. So not a lot of yeah. players, so the clubs are going to make that purchase yeah, either. Yeah, go for it, yeah. I don't, I don't think he's going to move in time soon. I think he can spend one more season in Dortmund and then yeah. weigh his options after maybe the next season. Yeah. I don't Probably think he should. Maybe, like, maybe in one more season, Carvajal might, I don't know, might start regressing. Then he might have a chance to Real Madrid. But unless that happens, I don't think he has a starting spot. Do you think he has brought it differently to replace Carvajal? Being yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, he's a really good player, player, tall player, fast. I mean, he has... I I think he can. Carvajal has not been that great defensively either in the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, he, he's pretty young. He plays him. Um and he's pretty young and there are still like some uh, like small issues with his game. Um in particular I remember when he was fresh in the Bundesliga he wasn't um he wasn't really used um to the Bundesliga so he would get bullied a lot as an attacker by by defenders. Uh, and he's improved on that um a lot his aggression is a lot better now um now the problem is like sometimes he has too much aggression he doesn't play well with his teammates um like there's been a couple of times where he's refused to be subbed off which is uh, never a good sign yeah. especially in a young player um you know so he needs i think the best thing for him to do would be to stay somewhere and i'm not saying it has to be dortmund necessarily just somewhere where he can be where he can work on his game and become a more complete player and then once he's ready he could move up to uh, madrid to i think he like, should definitely stay in um, in dortmund i think it's all the same case with caro hal too he was in dortmund in germany for like a very long time before he came back to madrid so hakim is going through the same exact scenario that caro hal did um, at one point so I think he should stay at Dortmund. I think right now for him the best club is Dortmund. Miro, a question. And maybe in a couple of years. 
directly you know for you uh, based yeah. on how kawa has form dipped okay and uh, yeah you all suffered like injury the long the entire back line uh, wouldn't you prefer a, a player like uh, hakimi because you could argue that he's like an improvement on nacho so he can pretty much mm. play anywhere and in addition to that it's better for a player to learn discipline and learn his learn uh, how to uh, uh, his ego at the age of 21 rather than the age of 23 24 because that's pretty much when he become the player he's supposed to be yeah. and uh, so, real madrid would definitely be the place to curb your ego like if you come to real madrid and if he's brought back on loan and he's going to be told to curb his ego especially zidane being there he's a really good man manager so he's going to know he better he needs to leave his ego at the door because ramos is not going to let him have yeah. any ego like that you know zidane won't let him have yeah. <laughs> the and thing with zidane is like even when you show like a little bit of ego you are on the bench yeah you know and you're not even on the squad so and to be he up. won't pull the same antics with zidane you know so Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. Maybe like it might be a good time for him to come back. But see, Carvajal was out injured, you know, with his heart issue and all that, yeah. with his lungs and all that. So he, he was out for 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 time, and now he's back. And he wasn't doing that great till recently. But then right now, Carvajal is actually at a good point. He's actually playing well again after maybe like two years. So I don't think that bringing Hakimi right now would be the best option. Or maybe. Maybe though, Sida uh, might be thinking about it because we sent off Audrey Sola to Bayern. So right now we don't have a backup right back apart from Nacho. So maybe Sida is thinking about bringing Hakimi back. So then there'll be like a good competition for the right back position. So I, I'd be happy either way. You know, I'd be happy if Hakimi stays in Dortmund and learns his trade there for one more year, or if he comes back and competes with Carvajal. Either way, we will. You know, it will be good for the club. Right. Okay. Let's move on to the two wingers, uh, Rodrigo and Vinicius. Rodrigo. Yeah. Um, first thoughts on Rodrigo versus Vinicius. Who do you prefer? Who do you think is a better player? Who do you think? Is? Uh, for me, Shaman. Uh, Vinicius. Shaman. Shaman, go for it. I think first thing that comes to mind is the Brazilian flair with both of them. Yeah. You know, the way they play. Yeah. I mean yeah. the, that that samba style, so I think that fits in with Real Madrid as well. The the the, the persona, because I I haven't watched them play as much, so you, maybe you just fill in the blanks for me. Like I think as far as I've seen, like Vinicius plays on the left, right? Yeah, left wing. Yeah, left wing. He's left wing. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, as a left winger, like to replace Ronaldo, that's just long term replacement. The flair, that you know, the tricks and the shot, cut back, all those things. He has that. I think I think he is also. Sh- I've seen a bit of showboating, as yeah. such as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, so you have respect for that from a Brazilian, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I I think that's part of his game, like growing up yeah, playing for a big club. Yeah, you know? I think his idol is Neymar actually. So, yeah, make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I think players like that get a kick kick out of it as well because playing yeah. on the left wing, you have a lot of freedom, you know. You you play like man just tend to give you a lot of freedom. They don't even catch back sometimes. If a good player, you just play front, attack the ball, attack the goal. So I think, uh, yeah. So that's what I want to know whether he only plays on the left or whether he's will start to play a striker. So you know, oh, right? he's uh, pretty much he's a big, he's not. He's pretty yeah. much yeah. He plays on left. He's finished. Mainly, yeah. Yeah. I, Sidan tried him on the right as well, but it didn't re- didn't really work out. I mean, he he tried with um, Hazard on the left and Vinicius on the right. But he wasn't that effective. He's better cutting in uh, towards the goal, right. so, than so, playing on the right wing and going outside. So, so if Hazard comes back, Vinicius will lose his place basically. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, no, I think Madrid are looking at Vinicius more as like a long-term project. You know, I think for yeah. the next couple of years, maybe two, three years, just Hazard. You know, Hazard can play there. But you know, Vinicius yeah. can you know come in. Against like smaller teams or like you know be subbed in or like you know he he'll get like minutes and he'll be always sub. training with this yeah as an impact yeah. sub and also against smaller teams you know starting against smaller yeah. teams so especially I think he Hazard can not being that fit a player yeah Bale not yeah. that fit a player 
there are definitely opportunities for him to play it just it depends yeah, on him yeah. to adapt his game enough to play um miro i want to ask everybody yeah. else uh, their opinions on the two who is better and then just stand up stand up and then we'll come back to you and you can fill in the gaps and give us more details yeah. look i haven't seen him play a whole lot but um, in terms of a replacement for ronaldo i don't really think he's ronaldo style of player Definitely. exactly he's not exactly that he's really more of a winger whereas uh, yeah. well, i don't know i think shall i like trying to say uh, it's more that ronaldo's position he was like play like that he's like early ronaldo maybe yeah early ronaldo yeah, yeah. i i like, 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 there's a distinct like there's a distinct difference between a winger and a winger type ronaldo because ronaldo was a winger but he was a hybrid forward as well good score as a winger what his wingers are assist makers you know they cut in they hit the like later on the he transitioned to like more of a forward yeah uh, like exactly. a out and out striker the first couple of years so like the first two three years even ronaldo was not scoring much right yeah yeah, yeah he wasn't he yeah was just, because so, that wasn't where he was played right so with uh, ronaldo even in his early youth i think he was a lot more uh, direct and a lot more goal focused than vinicius is like he would want to do every skill in the book but he still had that urge to score and vinicius still hasn't found out how much he wants to score like he'll take the shot of the round and he'll take the pass of the round and he's uncertain of it whereas ronaldo would be a lot more direct like he knows that he wants to score and he would take it upon himself but looking at the stats rodrigo has nine goals and two assists in 21 games Vinicius? while uh, vinicius has four goals and three assists in 28 games four goals and three assists yeah Yeah. So um, when you look at it from that point, Rodrigo has been more effective, but um, Vinicius has had more much more, play, mature, much more play, mature play in front of goal. And with, when it comes to the final decision making, he's a very mature player. But um, when it comes to skills, yeah. I think uh, Vinicius is Vinicius is better. Yeah. 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 And and Vinicius is more like, explosive as a player. Yeah. They need yeah, a really yeah. 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 He's more explosive. again also as far as uh, comparisons with ronaldo go i think we should remember that how old is vinicius now is 19 right no 19 uh, yeah really so like when when ronaldo came in to madrid he was much more of a complete player yeah. at that time yeah. he was a lot older as well so you got to keep take that into account as well no it's going to take time it is going to yeah. take a lot of experience as well for vinicius to come to that level in terms of i don't know if you guys have watched Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um so like I don't know if you guys have watched like Ronaldo like right after he came to United he came to United when he was like 18 19 yeah, 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 yeah. uh but he wasn't that great Yeah he was, no, yeah, he was back not, when he, he had like the, the string bean haircut rash. before the plastic surgery yeah, yeah. yeah he was uh, yeah, he wasn't that good it took time for him to mature yeah so Um, but that was because of his work ethic. His work ethic is different yeah. to every other player. Yeah. So, so I don't think we can compare either Rodrigo yeah. or Vinicius to them. So Ronaldo basically, um, at, there was a point before he left where he was taking about, where well, he was scoring about forty percent of the goals, and he was taking like uh, eight to nine shots a game. Yeah. I think. you can't really uh, replicate that sort of form and like uh, give that sort of burden to these two young wingers and i think like as soon as as long as you share the load among those three the three forwards you have yeah. i think uh, a reasonable output will be performed like you can see this season uh, and the fact that bear come, comes on and off uh, on most games right uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's 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 hard to say how what the future is going to look like because they're still 19 and you can't really say a lot at that age but it it looks very promising especially with uh, Rodrigo because he like I saw him like uh, that Champions League game against uh, was it Galatasaray Galatasaray yeah he scored three goals yeah he's yeah exactly he scored like three goals in like, that trick the had a yeah a right left exactly left. Yeah. that that reminded me a lot about how Ronaldo used to play as well off, but he was he was playing on the right um and it does help that Benzema is having like one of the seasons of his life 
uh may has been like yeah. having a bit of a tough time like these days like in the last few games oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, at the at the at the time when they were playing the against galatasaray right? um yeah it's it's good to see we'll see how what the future is like uh, yeah. for both of them uh, and then who do you feel is the better player who do you feel is the player with more potential Okay. More worse than that. Uh, yeah. This one with better player. Tough. That's a tough question. Uh, I don't think that. I don't think I can name a better player from the two. I think the two are very different. When it comes to Vinicius, he's very explosive. He got pace. He got skills. You know, he's going to create chances out of nothing. He's going to like you know, whenever Vinicius gets the ball, it's like you're waiting for something to happen. You know, it's like when you like you you seen I think against Barcelona even you know when he gets the ball, you worry like. Think that something's going to happen. He's going to take take this mm-hmm. player on, like you know, yeah, he make a run. Players. Yeah, he he makes it. He makes the game entertaining. So Vinicius is he's like he, he's like a impact player. But when it comes to Rodrigo, he he doesn't appear much in games. You know, he just randomly out out of a, or nowhere he appears, he scores a goal. So yeah. I think when it comes to maturity, Rodrigo is definitely more matured than Vinicius. But Vinicius has the potential to be. a really good player as in when i say a really good player he has the potential to win a ballon d'or someday so that's what i feel about the two players so i feel like vinicius is a better player than rodrigo but if rodrigo if trained properly if he uh, keeps working on his you know in in his friends uh, i feel like he might end up being a very good striker i don't think he should be playing as a as a winger i, I feel I, like I he, he might convert as well as a striker yeah he would make a very good support striker or even like a main striker yeah. so since benzema is also leaving soon i feel like he should be molded into like a support striker sort of position and he should be taken away from the wing i i don't think like his strengths are coming out on the wing as much as vinicius because vinicius is like a complete winger you know he can you know he can take on players he can make runs and all that but when it comes to rodrigo he's a he's a goal scorer so i don't feel like they should be compared because they are very different players but um in the in the next 2 3 years maybe we'll get to see you know what they end up like so here give us a introduction to valverde position playing style and what okay. he offers that makes him such a big uh, that make, makes him so hyped up at the moment all right so um Valverde was playing in Castilla like a couple of years back and then uh, last season he was brought into the main team. Uh he wasn't you know he, he was playing well you know Shay Peke uh he was doing okay last year. But then this year is when he actually truly like came through you know and I think his main strength is his engine like he runs the whole game man like I, I don't know if you have seen the guy but he just Runs, runs, runs the whole game. I think that's that's a rare trait. That engine is very rare in a yeah. footballer. That the top player, the most that important is, thing for a midfielder. It doesn't matter if it's uh, first minute or the last minute. He's running. You know, he's always running for the balls. He's always going in for fifty challenges. He's always, you know, making making tackles. He's always like, you know, running. He he's just you know all over the place. And I think that's yeah. a very rare quality. You know, especially for a young player as him. Yeah. Um, that really, I mean, you, I mean, there were so many goals where it was him who took the ball all the way. Like in the in the last ten fifteen minutes, he he takes the ball from the midfield, he runs all the way to the goal, and he lays off a pass for another player. And there were like I think three or four goals like that this season, and that shows that even in the last minute, in the last few minutes, he's he's still running, you know. And I think that's the main attribute that I see that you know he it makes he that makes him a, a special player. He is someone like Gerard, you know. Um, he has that sort of like can't a Gerard type of like mentality, and I think he perfectly sums up Mad- Madridismo for Madrid fans, you know. I mean, I think the the whole point of you know Real Madrid, I think the mentality is about winning. You know, it's about going to the last minute. So like all the chance, the club chance, the club ideology is based around going to the last minute and winning. So Fede perfectly embodies that. you know the way he plays his attitude uh, how he shows his passion you know even when someone else scores a goal you know you can see that he's genuinely really happy and i think he is 
he shows perfect madridism and he has a brilliant brilliant future in real madrid i mean he's going to be big someday man like believe me james have you seen him play yeah. like yeah i've uh, can you hear me yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so i've uh, not watched him too well but i've seen him and uh, he's not uh, he's not afraid of committing tackles he's not he's not he's not rash exactly but he's very uh, determined like he goes into tackles without worrying about it even that uh, time he brought down morata that was a real yeah. event that i saw that, that was a match winning tackle man that we won the game i thought players. that was just a killer instinct they had to take down morata like that and a lot of young players they wouldn't do anything they tried to pull his shirt like most they would try to pull his shirt he did what ramos would do and took the guy out he just ended yeah. it dead and there he he with him cap it got red he was like better red than this and to make those kind of decisions and like he knew what he was doing he didn't just panic and do it yeah. i feel like he's quite mature in that aspect uh, what i want to ask you uh, miru is your engine doesn't last forever even if he, he, he he's going to burn out if he if he uh, plays like this every season he's not going to be able to continue this like if he only takes one injury to just stop this uh, like his flow what technical aspect what technical attributes does he bring to like the Madrid midfield because no matter it doesn't matter if you run every match okay if you run there every like the entire 90 minutes you still need a lot of technical ability to play for Real Madrid so what is it that you yeah. see that he, you feel like he's going to develop adapt and focus on so that he can uh, he can use running like his engine as an attribute rather than his uh, entire Okay. He plays uh, center midfielder. He is a center midfielder. He, he doesn't center midfielder. He plays yeah. everywhere actually, you know. He, he can play as Cam, he can play in he, he can play as CDM. But yeah. he mostly so, plays in the CDM. Yeah. So he most of the uh, play in the midfield of 3, right? Yeah, 3. Maybe as a right midfielder mostly, yeah. yeah. I think you know he's very good technically and that's what I said James I think I mean the thing with um fede he said he's good at a lot of things you know he's not perfect at one thing and i don't i'm not saying that he's he's the best at one thing but he's just good at overall everything like you know he's, a, he's basically like a complete midfielder where he can take a good shot he can, he can make a good pass you know he can make a tackle he he, he does everything he's someone he, like gerard like, that's box. why he, he's very box to box extremely box to box and that's why I um, compared him with Gerard. You know, with Gerard, you know, you, he did everything. You know, he made runs. He, you know, he made tackles. He, he took shots. Fede has that sort of like playing style where he can sort of do a little of everything. So I don't think that I, if you take away his engine, I, I don't. I, I can't just directly say this is what he's really good at. But he's good at so many different things that it makes him like a complete player. So. Um, I think that's what he used for his performance. He's, uh, he's like Kante, but with uh, Ramos' yeah. mentality. Because Kante is like... Yeah, no matter, exactly. No matter how good his Kante is, like, he doesn't have that killer instinct. Like, he yeah. wouldn't just yeah. go for it. It would depend on like his move. But it's a bit of uh, like Kante's style with uh, Ramos' mentality. Um, yeah. How yeah. old is he? Where he comes from? Twenty one. It's twenty one, I think. Twenty. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, not bad. Seven to eight, really young, good players. That's very really rare. At one. Yeah, yeah, we got. Yeah, we got Valverde, and not even Where talking about Regulon, Oscar Rodriguez, uh, Raheem Diaz, Taque Fosa Kubo. Uh, I mean, we have like so many youngsters, man. <laughs> Now it's a matter of who are we going to sell eventually. <laughs> Nero, I'd, I'd like to remind you where Kubo yeah. came from. In case you forget, forgot, you can look at my shirt. So uh, <laughs> I remember. So you take that. So basically, basically, guys, uh, Kubo <laughs> betrayed Barcelona and did a Figo and joined Real Madrid. <laughs> so, Wasn't there a Barca player? Sorry, a Madrid player who went to Barca as well? Uh, Eto went to Barca. He, he was, not, not Eto, as in uh, a youth. Kubo came to Madrid and uh, no, no, no. No one did. No one did. a prospect Madrid went to. 
Come on. No. I don't. All right. I, I don't. I don't <laughs> remember anyone going to Baza. Why would anyone go to Baza from Madrid, man? <laughs> that doesn't happen usually. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be cutting that out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like all the famous guys who like more clubs, they came from Barcelona to Madrid, not the other way around, right? So, who are these except famous? Neto, of course. For money, for Ronaldo. Money. Ronaldo came from Barcelona to Madrid. <laughs> Figo. Mute, Miro. Figo. How can you forget Figo? <laughs> yeah, man. Figo. Big bus. Big bus. Okay. Keep it. So. I think we we'll right, are that for today. Okay. Yeah. We've got yeah. a bit of discussion there. Uh, cool. And Ali, for the part in the meeting. We'll see you guys next time. Good job. Yeah. We'll stop recording. Now. Like, subscribe. See you guys. <laughs> Do your thing. <laughs> Imagine James forgets to record. <laughs> Imagine that because they got. Well, guys, so why did it still say record if I've been recording? <laughs> Salon Pass, Total Football.